The January transfer window is now open. The winter sale is on. It's time we highlight one striker. I mean signing. Forgive me. It's just that everybody, it seems, needs a striker this January. Let's go. But firstly, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for the support over the course of 2023. We grew, we expanded, and it's time we do it all over again this time around. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do that. It's free to do so. Leave a like too. And in the comments below, who do you want your club to sign this winter? I'll be replying and responding to all of those as per usual. Let's begin with Cheltenham Town. For Cheltenham, I've gone with Sean McGurk, currently playing his football at Leeds United. Look, Cheltenham's attacking play could only have got better after the first 10 games, but a few more pieces to the puzzle, and we could be talking about one dangerous front line in Skybet League One. Daryl Clark has got this side firing, and he needed to. Sean McGurk isn't anywhere near the Leeds United first team right now, but under 21's level, he's different gravy. He's a cut above, he's technical, he's quick, he's a creative player that can operate in in that number 10 position but anywhere also across that front line. Sean is brilliant in and around the box looking to carve out opportunities, chances in zone 14 and he can have a go at himself too. He already has seven goal contributions in eight Premier League 2 matches this season. One of the best attacking players at that level at this moment in time. Will Goodwin, George Lloyd, they're firing in the number 9 position. You had a proper number 10 in that area and we could be speaking about Cheltenham climbing out of that bottom four really quite soon. For Reading, I've gone with with Lee Gregory, we don't quite know the financial situation of Reading going into this winter window, so Gregory would be a cheaper or loan option to go for. Reading could do with another striker and maybe somebody of a slightly different profile. His experience would be utterly priceless for Reading at this stage and his proven quality at this level would also be pretty helpful too. Gregory's ability to link up play, press from the front, would fit the Seller style extremely well and provide a few more goals they might need during the rest of their relegation fight in League One. 61 League One goals across 152 appearances. This is a short-term signing, but one I think could make sense. Lee Gregory to Reading. Let's make it happen. For Fleetwood, I've gone with the right-back, Danassian, from Ipswich Town. This could be a loan deal or maybe a permanent one. We'll have to wait and see. With Sean Rooney being frozen out, a proven quality League One right-sided defender should be on the list. And Danassian is definitely that. He's been at Fleetwood before, so he's familiar of the area and the football club. 19 appearances he made back when he was on loan in 2021, but since then has played lots of games in Skybet League One. He made 38 appearances in the side that got promoted out of League One with Ipswich last season, but since then has struggled for minutes in the Championship. For all parties, this deal makes total sense. An opportunity for guaranteed minutes at a club that are desperate for a player of this caliber and quality. For Carlisle United, I've gone with Charlie Kirk. This would be a free transfer. Look, it didn't work out at Charlton and Carlisle are in need of some attacking spark. And on his day, Charlie Kirk has plenty of it. He's a quick, direct, goal-hungry wide player who in previous seasons has shone at League One level. A few years ago at Crew, he accumulated 14 goal involvements, creating 11 big chances across one campaign, then moved for half a million quid. The talent can't be doubted. He's got to be in the right mind space and if he does find that good headspace, this could be a perfect winter addition for Carlisle United. A good vein of form for Charlie Kirk and he could be their attacking saviour or their saviour full stop. For Exeter, I've gone ambitious. I've gone Jake Young, currently on loan at Swindon Town but owned by Bradford City. The Exeter board has spoken about backing Gary Caldwell this January and this transfer would be a step in that direction being the joint lowest goal scorers in the league. A fresh number nine must be on the agenda and Jake Young would be exactly that. He scored 16 goals in Skybet League 2 so far, converting 25% of his chances, one of the highest chance conversion percentages across all strikers currently operating in the Football League. Young is on loan at Swindon Town, but owned by Bradford City. So this could be a slightly more complicated deal to do, but the right fee, a step up in division, I think all parties could be tempted by this. For Burton, I've gone with Kane Edwards. This would be a loan transfer from Arsenal. Burton have struggled in the final third, so another striker would be more than handy. Edwards is extremely highly rated at Arsenal and should be looking for his first professional minutes 
this January. Prolific is a strong word at 20 years of age, but so far this season, he's got seven goals in nine Premier League two games. Two seasons ago, he went 16 in 16 for the under 18. His complete forward play would offer something this Burton side simply don't have. At 20 years of age, this is a really good sign to go and get done. For Wickham, I've gone with George Edmondson, currently at Ipswich Town, with injuries and form hindering Wickham at the back. A new centre-back should be on the winter list. Edmondson has struggled for minutes in the Championship this season, and a step down should make this a fairly realistic option for Wickham. But I think there will be competition. Pompey are linked, Barnsley are linked. Wickham, they've been very ambitious in the window, especially the last summer window. This would be a really, really good signing. He's a real blend between a traditional centre-back and a player that can build from the back. A hybrid player that would fit perfectly in this progressive Bloomfield side. He's not short of experience at 26, either making 70 League One appearances already. He was fantastic in Scotland for Rangers a couple of years ago with a promotion during his last stint in League One. This would be a fantastic signing for Wickham Wanderers. For Wigan, I've gone with Connor Coventry. This would be probably a loan deal, maybe permanent, not sure, from West Ham United. But how this man is not out on loan and playing in the under-23s, I just don't know. He is wasted not playing professional minutes week in, week out. Wigan could do with some more midfield reinforcements and Connor Coventry would be some coup. He's a deep-line playmaker, likes to operate in that number 6 slash 8 position. He impressed in the Championship last season for Rotherham United but spent time in League One before with Lincoln and MK Dons. He can play as a single pivot, as a double pivot, looking to transition and create from deep, an area this Wigan side could improve when looking at their creative numbers. Connor Coventry would be some pick up for Wigan this January. Go and make it happen. For Cambridge, I've gone with Harvey Blair. This would be a loan deal from Liverpool. With Hadme and Kunchungu out injured, Cambridge are in desperate need for some more attacking options. And Harvey Blair would be that. The Liverpool youngster can play anywhere across that front four, both wings, centre forward and behind the number nine. Adding that attacking versatility this squad is crying out for right now. Across 16 games last season, he got involved in six goals, helping his side finish second in Premier League 2. His pace and 1v1 ability is fantastic on the turnover, and with the likes of Jack Lancaster, Sonny Kaikai around him, this could be another scary element to this Cambridge United attack. For Port Vale, I've gone with the left wing-back Ben Prasini. On loan, this would be from Aston Villa. Another attacking fullback was highlighted, and Ben Crescini would be the perfect fit. The Aston Villa prospect is looking for his first professional loan after impressing on the youth stage, so a League One move now feels about right. He's a front-footed wing-back who wants to create from the wide area, but he's also not afraid to have a go himself either. Go and check out his goal against Liverpool in the Youth FA Cup final. It was some hit. He's front-footed. He wants to create, but like I say, with that goal he scored, it's just beautiful he can score too as well they've got Conor Grant in that position but Ben Crescini would provide a slightly more dynamic option in that position Ben Crescini to Port Vale a loan deal let's do it for Leighton Orient, I've gone with Darko Giabi. This would be a loan deal from Leeds United. He's ready for first team minutes, so a League One loan move now in January makes total sense. The highly rated youngster has a great physical presence in the middle, looking to win the ball back and powerfully drive with the ball in transition. For somebody of a six foot five frame, his dribbling ability is very impressive and would suit the progressive intentions of this Richie Welland outfit. There will be competition for his signature this January, but if Leighton Orient do pull it off, it would be some signing and add that dynamic stardust they're missing in that midfield. For Shrewsbury, I've gone with Adamola Ola Adebomi. This would be a loan deal from Crystal Palace. This deal has been rumoured for some time, and if Shrewsbury do get their man this January, this would be one impressive capture, and here's why. Shrewsbury only have scored 14 goals in League One and have the second lowest expected goals out of every other club. Goals are the problem. At six foot five, Adamola offers a great physical presence to be a focal point, plays the running behind, and has that natural instinct in front of goal. He's accumulated seven goals in 10 starts this season, but an opportunity to prove himself on the professional stage shouldn't be turned down. 
this should happen. I think it's going to happen. And if it does, this could be the attacking stardust that they need because they need a striker so desperately. And Adamola would be a fantastic, fantastic fit. For Northampton, I've gone with Karl McAllister. This would be a transfer from Forest Green Rovers. After such a strong start to the season, Northampton can now start recruiting for more than just one season in League One. A very nice place to be. Carl McAllister has been in fine form for Forest Green so far this season. One of very few players that are having strong League Two campaigns at that club. He's completed the most dribbles, the most crosses, managed the highest number of chances created compared to all other League One attackers so far this season. This is quite an ambitious move for Northampton, but with McAllister currently in a League Two relegation scrap and Northampton looking like a really good side in League One this season, he could be tempted by this move. For Bristol Rovers, I've gone with Joe Taylor. This would be a loan deal from Luton Town. Look, Chris Martin has been in fine form since Matt Taylor joined the football club, but a slightly different option in the attacking third should still be on the list. Joe Taylor has been in fine form for Colchester in Sky Bet League 2 so far, and I think has shown he's ready for a step up. 11 goals in 24 starts and a struggling side is good, full stop. But his general movement in and around the box, ability to get in behind, has shone in the division below. The Luton Loney sits in the top 5% for shots on target and is comfortably outscoring his expected goals. With more chances, the goals will only increase. Call up Luton, get him recalled and send him to Bristol Rovers. He is League One ready. I'm telling you that now. For Charlton, I've gone with Johnson Clark Harris. I had to put him in the video somewhere. And Charlton, I think this could be a really, really good fit. When I saw this rumour, it all made sense. Charlton need a striker with Lee Byrne and Anike out injured. And when it comes to proven ability, Clark Harris is your man. After his failed transfer to Bristol Rovers and that deal now looking off completely, he hasn't played every week. So a move before his contract runs out in the summer looks well and truly on the cards. In 261 League One games, he's bagged 102 goals whilst being the top goal scorer in this division twice. His bullish fox in the box nature is what Charlton are crying out for and missing at this stage and would tick the experienced box that Michael Appleton has been looking for when he heads into this winter window. Clark Harris will be on the move in January. He's going somewhere and I think it should be Charlton. For Lincoln, I've gone with Mickey Mellon. This would be a loan deal from Burnley. Lincoln might have Freddie Draper returning, but another striker should be on the list this winter. Mickey Mellon has been running hot in Sky Bet League 2 so far this season. He's about 13 in nine starts, sitting in the top 6% for goals in the division. Mellon's general link-up play has been very, very impressive. He's got an unpredictable nature in the final third. It's impressed everybody, and it's now time to step up and show it on another stage. And League One feels like a natural progression. Freddie Draper and Mickey Mellon have accumulated 27 goal involvements already this season. Lincoln already owned one. Why not pick up the other one? Make it a pair. For Blackpool, I've gone with Matteo Joseph. This would be a loan deal from Leeds United. Whether Jordan Rhodes stays or not, Blackpool are in need for another striker. And Joseph is third choice at Leeds, but his next step is playing week in, week out at a good level. In League One, well, it feels about right. And Neil Critchley, centre forward, needs to be able to press, work effectively in build up, hit good numbers when it comes to output. All things considered, Joseph is showing promising signs of all of those departments. Fark clearly does rate the young forward. He's made appearances off the bench for Leeds in the championship. But, like I said, for his development, playing at a good level on a regular basis is the next step. Maybe in the early stages of the window, this could be quite difficult to pull off. But the domino effect of the transfer window later on leads on a striker. Joseph, he goes to Blackpool. For everybody involved, this could be a deal that works wonders. For Barnsley, I've gone with Patrick Bauer. This would be a loan deal or permanent deal from Preston after Liam Kitching left in the summer. Barnsley have been leakier at the back and Patrick, well, he'd come in and he would help things out. The physical, powerful, towering centre-back has a wealth of championship and League One experience. In fact, he's played over 230 games across both divisions. He's a constant threat from set pieces, defensively an absolute man mountain. He must be on the move this month. A lack of minutes for Preston so far should allow him to move in January. And with Barnsley crying out for this type of profile in a centre-back, this could be the perfect match. Go and get it done. 
For Derby, I've gone with Jay Matete. This would be a loan deal from Sunderland. Look, Derby aren't missing much, but Matete would come in, I think, and offer something a little bit different. Matete had a strong season in League One last time out, playing a role in Plymouth's promotion season after Christmas. His impressive ball-playing ability would provide a slightly more dynamic option for Derby in the midfield, looking to be progressive at every opportunity in transition. At 22, his fresh legs could add quite a tenacious and quite intense feel to that midfield, a spark that Derby could be missing on certain occasions and in certain situations as the season progresses. Matete has just come back from an injury, so working his way back into that Sunderland 11 for regular game time could be tricky. A low move to League One this January, I think, could be really possible. And Derby, they could be missing somebody of his ilk. Go and get it done, Derby County. For Bolton, I've gone with Jude Soonsop Bell. This would be a loan deal from Tottenham. Maybe slightly ambitious, but Bolton, they have their contacts, they have the pulling power. Bolton have options up top, of course they do, but another striker could get them over the line. Soonsop Bell has been attracting plenty of attention coming into this January transfer window, and when you look at his numbers for Tottenham, you can see exactly why. At 19, he's prolific. Seven goals in nine Premier League 2 games already this season. And for Chelsea at their youth level, two seasons ago, he went 14 in 16. He's now ready for his first professional spell and a dominant front-footed promotion pushing League One outfit. Bolton, they could be the perfect fit. For Stevenage, I've gone with Reese James, a deal from Sheffield Wednesday, either a loan or a permanent deal. Some fullback reinforcements should be on the list this January for Stevenage. And Reese James from Sheffield Wednesday, not the one from Chelsea, he's already injured, not him. This one's from Sheffield Wednesday. You probably would have got that. He would provide just that. The front-footed fullback has struggled for minutes in the championship this season, but has shown his quality in League One many times before. He's comfortable defensively, but going forward is also just as effective. Last season, he sat in the top 2% for accurate crosses and the top 5% for assists compared to other fullbacks in Skybet League One. He's only started three championship games. That should tempt him for a move away. A move to Stevenage would be a really quite sensible one. He feels like a Steve Evans type. Quite robust, very good going forward, comfortable defensively, fit in the system fine, not getting minutes in the championship. Go and get it done. It feels a perfect fit. For Oxford United, have gone with Freddy Ladapo. It's boring. It's boring, but water's wet and Oxford United need a new striker. With Mark Harris struggling for output this season on a consistent basis, a more natural finisher is most definitely on the list. Ladapo has only started twice in the Championship this season, so a move back down to League One could be realistic. He finished last season with 17 goals, but across all other League One games, he's accumulated a total of 66, a pretty good tally. One of the most clinical strikers at this level over the recent years. Both a permanent or loan deal should be possible. Either way, Oxford are crying out for this type of profile, linking back up with the likes of Carl Edwards and Greg Lee when they bloody get fit. Let's make it happen. At Peterborough, I've gone with Josh Stokes of older shots. Peterborough are never afraid to dip into the non-league market and pick up a star. Josh Stokes is definitely a star, currently doing his work at a brilliant level at non-league level. The lower league gurus have nothing but good words to say about him. He's a brilliant number 10 and he's only 17 years of age. He is setting the National League alight. In 27 games, he has 15 goals and two assists, attracting so much attention from higher up the pyramid. When it comes to developing young players, Peterborough is your club. The goal square midfielder would fit perfectly in this possession hungry, high intensity Peterborough outfit. This deal should be done. If it can get done, make it happen. There's going to be competition, but Peterborough, they have a really good pull in power, a great record of picking up players at this level. Young players to Josh Stokes to Peterborough from Aldershot in January. Make it happen. For Portsmouth, I've gone with Phoenix Patterson, currently playing his football at Fleetwood, along with a centre-back pomp he could do with another attacking spark in the wide areas. And Patterson, he would offer a very, very interesting spark. They got Paddy Lane from Fleetwood last January. Go and call them up again and say, this time we want Patterson because he is the next player coming out of Fleetwood in the wide areas that's ready to set Fratton Park alight. He's a fast, technical 1v1 winger who would suit the wide, orientated Messino style like fish to water. Yes, he's still very raw and would require patience, but Pompey, they've got the time. They're in a great position. They've got ready-made options. It's time to add some depth. 
Patterson has shown the kind of output he can produce for Waterford, picking up 28 goals and 18 assists in just 58 games. Fleetwood, they won't want to sell, but the right offer, the right fee, an opportunity for the new manager to invest, this could be a really good option. And breathe. That is every single League One club complete. That's one transfer every single League One club should make this January. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And like I said at the start, let me know in the comments below who you want your side to sign in this winter window. Till next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Jack Ward Football Podcast, and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care. Happy New Year.